This is the second lesson on learning to use RIMS2 multipliers. RIMS2 is a set of multipliers that one purchases from the Bureau of Economic Analysis that can be used for regional economic impact analysis. In this session, we'll learn how, what constitutes a bill of goods or an analysis by parts type of analysis. In conventional impact analysis, we can just take a change in final demand in a particular industry. In this case, for example, it might be oil seed and grain farming. And we can take a change in final demand, let's say it's a million dollars of final demand sales, and you can multiply that change times each one of these final demand multipliers to estimate what might be the area economic impacts. But many industries don't fit neatly into these categories. Many industries are not well described in our modeling system. This is especially true of new or emerging industries or industries that are just simply distinct from the overall average. And so to compensate for that, we can use a different type of method of analysis. And we can look at the balance sheet of an industry to identify its major inputs into production. And then we can estimate either the amount or the percentages of those inputs that are purchased from the region within which we're studying. In the case of a new or a completely different industry, we might have to look at a balance sheet. We might have to look at perhaps university studies of feasibility. We might have to look at engineering studies. But oftentimes, we might just simply look at the new firm, the new proposed firm, and ask them point blank. What are your major production inputs, and do you plan buying them from the local economy? and how much they expect to spend on those production inputs. We also need to know how many workers will be involved with the project, and we need to know what those workers are going to earn. Once we get that information, we can do what's called a bill of goods analysis. That's the phrase that's used by the RIMS2 manual that teaches people how to do this type of analysis. It's also called an analysis of inputs or an analysis by parts method of estimating economic impacts. It can seem a little more complicated and cumbersome, but when there is limited information about an industry, this is the approach that we take to try to produce as close as possible an economic characterization as well as impact as we can. To do this kind of analysis, we first need a multiplier table, and that's what the RIMS2 tables uh, provide us, the, the industri industry specific multipliers for all of the inputs that we're going to analyze. And we also need to translate household spending into the other components that we have in the, in the multiplier tables that we just talked about. So again, here is a simple multiplier table that comes from the current RIMS2 model for the state of Iowa. This is what's called the total requirements table. And to do a bill of goods analysis, all we need are these first four items from your table. We need the final demand output multiplier. We need the final demand earnings multiplier. We need the final demand value added multiplier. And we need the final demand employment multiplier. Remembering that employment is always expressed on a per million dollars of output basis. So in a very simplified example, let's pretend there's a, a prospective furniture manufacturer startup. Let's say they make rocking chairs or something. And that startup thinks that they could have sales of about 1.2 million. And in this case, we're just going to assume that there are only a few major requirements for this manufacturer to make that furniture. When we calculate the bill of goods analysis, what we first need to know is how much of the inputs that they need are purchased from the regional economy. So 20% of their input is it comes from sawmills and wood, pre wood preservation facilities in their region. These are the industry codes that are in the RIMS2 multipliers. 10% of their inputs come from area wholesale traders. 5% of their total inputs come from an area plastics manufacturer. 8% of their total inputs come from a truck transportation firms. And then 30% of their inputs go to workers, labor. And then finally, 27% of their inputs are derived from outside of the county. Then we can multiply these values times 1.2 million to get the regionally supplied input amounts as well as the amount of inputs that are derived from outside of the economy. So quickly, here are the steps that we go through with the bill of goods procedure. 
we determine the amount of regionally supplied inputs, and then next what we're going to do is multiply each of these regionally supplied inputs times their respective multipliers. These are the multipliers for all of those industries that we listed as their inputs on the bill of goods. We had the area, sawmill, plastics, wholesale, truck transportation, as well as the households. And then here are the respective multipliers that would be applied. In this case, I'm not doing the value added multiplier um, in this example. I'm simply looking at output, earnings, which is the money that workers make, and jobs. So I'm just using one, two, and four in this example. But you could certainly put in the value added multiplier as well. So I multiplied $240,000 times, we'll go back one, its output multiplier, go forward one, gave us $396,024. And we did that for each one of these input categories. Go back one. Each one of those input categories, local purchases were multiplied times their output multiplier. And now we'll repeat this process with earnings as well as with jobs, remembering that jobs are expressed on a per million dollars of output basis. And that then gives us all of our economic impacts associated with each of the inputs that were required for this new factory. So we have the, the we, we needed this much of inputs and to, to supply these inputs, these firms then had a multiplier relationship with the rest of the economy that was larger than the amount of those inputs. So we sum all of those relationships up in output in the labor income stimulated, in the total jobs that have been stimulated, and we don't have any kind of multipliers with the imports because they're not in our economy and they're not part of our economic impact. We can sum these values up and we get totals, and our total is $1.241 million worth of output, $322,054 worth of labor income and 8.74 jobs. Now this sum is the indirect and induced values. It's not the complete economic impact, it's the multiplied through economic impact that we talk about based on the direct change. And the direct change was I had a factory that was going to produce $1.2 million worth of annual output, and we knew it was going to pay its workers $360,000. So what we have to do here then is add the direct lines to this example. And I have now added the direct lines to this example. It was 1.2 million was what was the expected output of this new factory. We knew that the firm was going to pay $360,000 to its workers, and I've arbitrarily set the number of workers at 12. Alternatively, you could have gone into the model, you could have gone into the RIMS2 um, multiplier tables, and you could have deduced from an other wood products manufacturing sector in the table, that there were usually about 13 jobs per million dollars of output. Multiply 13 times 1.2 and you would get roughly 15.6 jobs. That's another way that you could impute the number of jobs that were there, but in this case I just simply gave you the number 12. So we sum the indirect and induced values plus the direct values and that gives us our total economic impact. Our total economic impact then was the initial activity at the plant plus all of the activity stimulated when the plant made purchases from the regional economy. The direct value are the initial labor incomes at the plant plus the labor incomes that were stimulated that were stimulated because of this ex these, these inputs that were required and so on and so forth. And so we add the indirect and induced plus the direct to get our total economic impact from this new plant. So our total economic impact from this new plant 2.4 million in output, 682,000 in labor income, and almost 21 jobs. And you can calculate then a very straightforward multiplier. The total value divided by the direct value gives you your output multiplier, 2.035, your labor income multiplier of 1.9, and your jobs multiplier of something just a little over 1.7.